Hello and welcome to Trend Maker or TR3 ND Maker. My name is Alex and today we're going to learn how to print Pet G like an absolute pro. Okay, now to start off with, Pet G is very different than PLA in the sense that it is thick. Okay, so a lot of people really struggle with PETG in the beginning, mostly because they're trying to print like they're printing PLA, and it just doesn't work that way. PETG, because it's thick, wants to print slower. Obviously, you're going to need more heat, and basically, there's a couple settings that you're going to need to adjust so you'll get great results right out of the gate with printing PETG. We're going to go the profile that I've worked out here is actually for my Creality CR10S Pro, and I find that this profile actually works really well on my S5, as well as my regular CR10, and all of my Enders. So uh, this profile should pretty much work well across the board. Uh, you may have to do a little tweak here and there, and of course your retractions will vary based on sort of your extruder, direct drive, and things like that. So I would just keep your uh, retraction settings similar to whatever you do with PLA, and you should be fine. Let's start off by creating a new profile. In this case, I usually just put the brand of filament, the type of filament, the layer height, a notation, and a date. It just helps me keep it organized. And let's we'll start off with a 0.2 layer height. We'll be able to change this in the future, but let's get some confidence in printing to start with. An initial layer height of 0.24. This should help us add a little bit more plastic on that first layer. Be sure we get a nice adhesion. That's a, one of the tricky things here with PETG. 0.4 across the board, pretty standard settings here. Wall count is gonna be up to you. This is the test print, three, three walls is usually more than enough. And to match the wall thickness, we'll do the top layers at five, and that should match us up perfectly, 1.2 and 1.2 total. All right, we wanna check optimize wall printing order, compensate wall overlaps, compensate inner wall overlaps, and these may vary based on your uh, whatever model you're doing. Now ZCM alignment doesn't really matter. This is a test print. Um, I'm going to use a user defined here for the back, but uh, it's really uh, your call based on the print that you're, you're doing. For now we're going to leave ironing disabled. I did just do a video on enabling ironing and settings. I'm going to put a notation up for that. Uh, go ahead and check that out. Those settings should work in PETG. You might have to just tweak a few things a little bit, but for the most part, those settings should work well here. I just don't want to complicate this. All right, now infill density. We're going to go nice and light on the infill. This is a test print. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't need any structure here. So we'll go 10%. And the infill pattern doesn't really matter too much, although I do find that PETG does prefer simple infills. Trihexagon, cubic subdivision, gyroid, these things that are a little more complicated. It does seem to struggle with, especially if you're going to do any speed. I'd rather go nice and easy, simple uh, to get my strength. Now for the infill overlap percentage, 15%. These are pretty standard settings, whatever you would do in PLA. You can just pretty much run those. If you haven't done so already, do me a favor, scroll down just a little bit, hit that like and subscribe. That's what keeps me super motivated to produce this content for you, but let's continue on. All right, now we're gonna get into temperatures here, and I would recommend starting with a base temperature of about 230. That should be pretty good for most pet G. If you're gonna go a little faster, you're gonna probably wanna increase that a little bit, and you can adjust, obviously, a little lower. I usually find that at minimum, you need about 225, 230, 235, um, and if I'm trying to go a little faster, go up a little higher. Okay, and we're gonna keep that pretty much across the board for all layers. Build plate temperature, now this is can get a little complicated here. Uh, 70 works fine, and you should have pretty good adhesion with 70. Going to 75, you're gonna probably get a little more bite. 80, um, I know when I'm doing my PEI sheet and sometimes glass, it will bind really, really hard. So keep that in mind. Uh, you don't wanna break your glass or pull up your bed sheet because you're getting too strong an adhesion. So I would recommend starting that at about 70 and then sort of work your way up. All right, now when it comes to speed, this is where it's gonna get a little tricky. Pet G is thick, it does not like to print fast. You can often print faster, but the look and the appearance will suffer and you may get gaps and little skips. So for infill, you can go a little faster if structure is not really that important, okay? And again, if we go with a simple simple infill, you should be okay, 35, 30. Um, if you want to look really nice and be strong, I would stick to about 25. Now wall speed, 25 is pretty much where I'm printing. Sometimes I'll go as high as 30, but I would recommend you start off slower here. I would recommend starting off at about 20. That way, just get a little confidence in it. After you get a five or six prints down, then you maybe bump that up five, and then you can try to experiment going a little higher. But, you know, slow and steady wins the race here. Don't, don't try to be in a hurry. 
all right? And then top and bottom speed. Now the Benchy does have a lot of uh, text on the bottom of the Benchy and a little bit of detail. So going slow here will help us get a little bit more adhesion. Also, I sort of like going slow as well because I can just double check my with my skirt going around to be sure that I've got my bed leveled properly and I'm getting good adhesion. So um, go slow on that. It's just one layer. Don't worry about it an extra minute or so, but you'll have a, a much, much better chance of a successful print. All right, so initial layer uh, speed, there you go, 15. That's perfect. And let's go um, number of slower layers. Let's do two. All right, acceleration control. I go usually conservative on these. I don't like rigging. Same with jerk here. Okay, and then retraction. This is going to be based on your particular printer. Pretty much go with whatever you're doing for PLA. I've got my this printer pretty tuned out, this uh, S Pro. So I have that retraction a little lower than normal. I don't like getting little gaps and stuff like that. So I'd rather have that retraction a little on the lower side than higher. And going down. All right, now fan speed. Now this is another really big important topic. 40 to 50 percent you usually do not want to go more than that and you should be able to get some decent bridging out of that um, you can of course do supports with pet g just be sure that you keep you're getting the nice distance and clearance we'll go address that on another video now here on build plate adhesion i'm going to do i pretty much always do a skirt uh, usually within that skirt uh, the first line goes around you get the second one down that second one i can tell pretty much if i've got my um nozzle at the right height and it's easy to adjust on the fly there if i need to so go nice and slow there if you don't have it right go ahead and adjust your your bed and then do it again all right and then you'll notice that one cool thing about uh, the benchy is it's 12 grams of filament which is really not that much so even if you had to do two or three of these to sort of lock in your settings for pet g um, definitely worthwhile on a thousand kilo roll so uh, definitely go ahead and do that. Uh, it's a small print. It's quick. Learn learn Petchy a little bit before you start going crazy. That pretty much wraps up this video on PetG. I hope you found this information useful. If you have any questions about PetG or any other 3D printing questions, do me a favor, just leave a message down in the comments below. I will try to get back to you within about 24 hours. Um, if you haven't done so already, please do me a favor, like and subscribe down below. That's what keeps me super motivated and excited to produce more content for you. But until that next video, I'm out.